Okay, let's kick off. Hello, everyone. I'm pretending that everyone is saying hello back. It's a little bit odd talking to silence, but hello. Hello, hello Michelle. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle, uh, International Partnerships Lead from NZT. Oh, sorry. Hello, Michelle. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet everyone. Uh, I'm based out of Singapore and um, welcome to our inaugural Global AgriFutures event. It's actually the first in our series and um, this is a, a platform designed to bring together thought leaders, innovation experts and industry leaders to explore opportunities and discuss ways to solve challenges together. So our plan is that every month AgriTech NZ and the New Zealand government would be inviting international guests to spark a topic for discussion. Uh, and it's designed to be highly interactive to facilitate exchange of ideas and, and new connections. So today's session is titled, How Collaboration Unlocks a Sustainable Future. And our special guest is Bayer Crop Science, um, who are here to share why innovation is so important to those they serve uh, how they go about doing it, as well as um, sharing examples of some of their collaborations. So our Bayer Crop Science guests with us today are from different countries and different teams, from seed genetics to digital technologies and services. Um, and each of them also lead strategic partnerships, research collaborations and venture creation efforts. So before we start, I'll just like to point out that we have um, 32 of us today together from six countries and all of us passionate about the future of agri-tech and all of us from different sectors, government agencies, startups to corporates and research teams from CRIs, Crown Research Institutes and universities. So I think for all of us who are here, um, and it's not a webinar, it's not a webinar format. It might be a little bit overwhelming to see so many faces on screen. So there are a couple of things that we can do. A uh, little request, firstly, to have your name and organization appear on your screen tag. Um, and secondly, to please have your networking guide with you. Because in the guide, you'll see names, you'll see the LinkedIn profiles and organizations of your fellow participants. Uh, and it's gonna be really helpful to track who's in the room. Bayer Crop Science friends, you also see in the guide a brief description of each um, NZ organization for your easy reference. And for participants who may not find your name there, it's because we had circulated the guide before your registration. So not to worry, just drop us a note in the group chat here. Now, today's event will unfold in three parts. So the first would be the first part of the session would be um, presentations from Bayer Crop Science, Agritech NZ, and the New Zealand government. Um, the second 30 minutes would be 60 second introductions for everyone, from everyone. And the, the last 30 minutes would be small group socials. So we'll use this timing as a rough guide and depending on the natural rhythm, we'll just adjust as we, as we go along. So now that everyone has settled in, I'm just looking around the screen and, and orientated ourselves to our environment. I'd like to introduce our guest igniter, Dr. Phil Taylor, Global Open Innovation Lead of Bayer Crop Science uh, and previous 12 year veteran at Monsanto. Dr. Phil is joining us from St. Louis, Missouri and his spark topic will be followed by Juliana Xu, uh, Apex Strategic Partnerships Lead based in Beijing and Anna Bickel. Uh, biotech and Breeding Partnerships Manager based in Missouri as well. So Phil, take it All away. All right. Thanks, Michelle, and, and really appreciate the opportunity to, to connect and, and talk with the group here. As, as Michelle said, we've got three of us to give you a little bit of a flavor of some of the partnership approaches and the collaborations and, and the work that we're doing with, with third parties around the globe. And it's kind of funny, we're starting in Missouri, we'll pop to Beijing and back bounce back to to St. Louis by the time we're done, but um, I think Hong Yan, you have a um, you have the slides. Do you not? Do you mind sharing? And we'll we'll talk through this really quickly. And and very much looking forward to the conversation. I think for the sake of uh, brevity, maybe um, I, I I do love to encourage questions, but I th I think Michelle's going to shout at me because I don't know that we have too much time. But um, we'll 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 figure out how to do that in the networking. 
but what I wanted to do really, um, really just to tee it up from a from a Bayer perspective is to to sort of make a point that you know even though we have one of the largest R and D organizations in in ag tech based you know around the world, we really can't do all the work that we need to do and that we need to do to support agriculture um, by ourselves. And this slide I, I, is almost a throwaway for this group, but but because we all know that you know innovation is critical for agriculture when you balance the increase in demand, uh, Hung Yan, sorry, if you don't mind building it out, um, with the pressures of supply, where we're looking at increased population density, increased middle class, greater need for um, better diets, better nutrition, but in the context of increased pest pressures, increased climate pressure, and uh, reducing land per capita. So we really have been for a long time as, as Monsanto and now Bayer, really thinking about how do we increase the productivity from agriculture. But what I think is a little bit newer and has added a very interesting sort of dynamic to the conversation over the last couple of years, um, Hung Yan, if you don't mind going to the next slide, is really thinking about this very much uh, in the context of sustainability and really doing this in a way that moves agriculture towards a carbon zero and very importantly, a more inclusive future um, as we think about all the things we need to do, but the context in which we need to do it. And so I'm particularly proud. I know the team that's joined me here this evening is also thinks about this a lot. The, the Bayer about a year and a bit ago uh, made some very significant uh, commitments towards both its own sustainability, but how it saw agriculture as being part of the solution to the, the greater climate challenge that we face. And this slide really calls out those, um, those commitments that we made, reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, from agriculture by 30%, reducing the impact of our environment, the environmental impact of our crop protection portfolio by 30%, and also empowering and connecting with 100 million smallholder farmers um, around the world. And so this is a, a great part of the mission for crop science, but it also, um, and I won't go into it here, but it also rolls up into some very significant commitments for, for Bayer as a group uh, across also our consumer health and, and pharmaceutical divisions. And so thinking about these commitments in the context of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that are across the bottom here really is what drives our aspiration towards really driving innovation, but doing it in a way that really can support our customers and consumers and, and the planet. And, and so what does this look like? Uh, Hung Yan, next slide, please. Um, I, I really like this slide because it actually sort of gives a visual of how we can really think about that productivity um, and, and how we can think about how we can do it on a smaller footprint with more precise and, and prescriptive and accurate sort of agricultural uh, um, products and, and, and um, operations. So each of these green squares you see actually produces the same amount of corn, about 250 kilograms of yield out of each one. And so you can see from moving from the right to the left, just how that footprint has shrunk over time from, you know, over 1300 square meters in 1940, all the way down to our sort of aspirational target of about 120 into the future. And so if we can really minimize the footprint of agriculture, maximize the productivity, you know, we really believe we can contribute to uh, the uh, solutions to climate change that are so sorely needed uh, around the globe. But from our perspective, really thinking about partner, partnering and, and innovation to drive the pipeline. Uh, next slide, please, Hung Yan. Um, we think about this very much in a sort of, oh, I didn't realize this was coming. I apologize really quickly. Um, just the aspects of that when we think about it from a technology perspective, really span the gamut. Um, you know, the seeds and trades side of, of the business, which was really the Monsanto legacy and the Monsanto strength, now coupled with the crop protection, which really was where Bayer's strength was before the in integration of the two companies. And now the opportunity we have to put digital farming and data science, um, as it's no accident that the sort of pink line weaves through the other aspects of this schematic here, to really say that data science and digital farming is the tool and the technology that really connects all these pieces together. Um, and so when we think about what we need to deliver, and I'm not going to go through the numbers on the bottom of this slide, um, it's very clear that we can't do this by ourselves and very clear that we need to leverage partnering and leverage uh, collaborations and, and strategic uh, relationships with third parties to really not only help us deliver the pipeline, but also help us shape where that pipeline is going and, and how we can think about the products that we're building for the next 10, 15 years, because one of the real downsides to things on the seeds and trade side in particular is we can be 15 years from concept to product. 
so we really have to think long term, but we also want to think open and think big. And so next slide, Hong Yan, please. Uh, um, we do adopt a very open innovation model um, for thinking about how to deliver that. And that takes a couple of flavors and, and you know, it's, it's a little bit simplistic to, to try to talk through it in a couple of minutes, but, but from both an incremental innovation where we're thinking about things that are gaps and needs now, how do we think about the next product, the next uh, piece of germplasm, the next trait, all the way through to leveraging, leveraging those innovations that have the potential to really come in and disrupt agriculture. And, and some of them you'll see called out here. So whether that's UAVs and drones, digital farming, biological tools like gene editing, you know, we use our open innovation model and our open innovation platform to really help us see into the future almost because startups and academics and, and university departments around the world are much more agile, much more able to adapt and adopt new technologies than a large corporation. And so we're always looking outside, we're always looking to partner. And you'll see on the right of the slide here that, that really that partnership takes a number of different modes and models. There's classic collaborations and licensing. Uh, we have our own uh, venture capital group is the Leaps by Bayer Group. We're actually both making uh, capital you know, venture investments, but also um, creating startups and, and spin out companies through to either customer sponsored research or, or university partnerships. Um, you know, we really have a, an approach to partnering that it's, it's completely boutique and it's completely tailored and, and customized for what we're able to do with a, with a particular partner. So I won't spend any time here, but obviously happy to discuss some of the aspects of this slide um, as we go through the rest of the evening. Um, then maybe the last thing I'll say is, is just that, um, you know, it's really all about driving that impact and driving that ambition that we have as a company really to get our shareholder value and the things we want to do as, as a corporation really in line with the sustainability commitments and, and the goals and the responsibility we have um, as a large company in, in the agriculture space to really be an impact generator and really be part of the solution um, to all of the, the sort of challenges we face, whether it's on the, the productivity or the, the supply side. Um, lastly, a very, maybe a very quick plug that, as, as I say, we're always open for a conversation and partnering and love opportunities like this to, to connect. Uh, we have a presence on, on LinkedIn for our open innovation team, which I'd love you to jump on and follow, or obviously more than happy to connect this evening or, or at any point in, in the future if we don't have time tonight. But uh, Michelle, thank you. Um, really appreciate you setting up this opportunity for us. And maybe with that, I'll hand it over to Juliana. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Hi, good morning, good evening. Uh, my name is Juliana Zhu. I'm leading the APAC Innovation Sourcing Team in, uh, for BioCrop Science R&D. Um, so uh, I want to thank um, all the New Zealand colleagues for giving us this opportunity to present, and I want to thank uh, the buyer colleagues for coming. Um, so I will talk a little bit about um, who we are, what we do, and also share a um, couple examples of the existing collaborations we have in the region. Um, so as um, Phil mentioned, that innovation is critical to agriculture, and of course we cannot do that alone. We need to collaborate with um, external, part, uh, external partners in order to um, accelerate our research. So the organization that Phil, um, Anna, and I belong to is called um, Open Innovation Strategic Partnership. Um, so this is an organization under BioCrop Science R&D. Um, so the organization is set up to be the, the bridge between external ecosystems and internal uh, buyer teams. So our job is to make your job easier when you are seeking um, collaborations with uh, buyer crop science. Um, so our entire team is um, well connected with more than uh, 16,000 buyer uh, scientists across the globe. Um, so once an um, external um, innovation is presented to us, we will find the most qualified um, expert within, uh, within buyer to evaluate the technology and together um, to explore uh, potential collaborative opportunities. Um, so this map, just to um, give you a um, sense that um, our, our team is, um, has a global presence, um, to ensure that uh, we are engaged with um, every important um, ecosystem in the world. Um, and each one of our colleagues also has a technical background, is also a, a technical expert in 
one or more, two or more of the areas listed um, at the top of the slides. And, and Phil, um, who just presented being a very important person on our, um, um, on our team, designs um, the global open innovation programs to enhance further interaction with um, external partners. Um, Hongya, next slide, please. Um, yeah, I just want to add more that uh, my team, the APAC um, OSD team sitting in Beijing, we are here to facilitate interactions between uh, buyer teams and, um, and uh, regional ecosystems. Um, and Michelle also asked me to um, talk about the existing collaborations that we have in the region. Um, so this is uh, one example of a collaboration that we have with the public sector. Um, and um, before I start, I want to clarify that I am actually presenting this slide on behalf of um, the Australian team and our um, we control team in Frankfurt. Um, I'm personally actually not involved in this collaboration. So Chris Staff on the, on the call, he may know this collaboration much better than I do. Um, but in any case, uh, just the overview, um, this is an international collaboration between um, Australia Springs Research and Development Corporation, or GRDC and BioCroc Science. Um, so because Australia has the second highest number of herbicide resistant weeds in the world, um, the major objective of this program is to um, discover new chemicals or new mode of actions to benefit Australian growers as well as farmers across the globe. Um, to manage, uh, to manage herbicide resistance for, for decades to come. So this program formed in 2015 um, and over the five years of the program, it had demonstrated promising results of discovering new chemicals for sustainable mode of action. Um, so uh, because of that, at the end of last year, the program got extended into phase two of discovery uh, for another five years uh, into 2025. So accumulated over the 10 years um, of the two phases of the program, um, GRDC will invest a total of 55 million euros researching the control of weeds of um, Australian uh, importance in wheat and uh, broad acre cereal crops. And also over this period of time, um, 56 postdocs um, from Australia and New Zealand uh, will each spend two years of, of their time um, to um, at our center of excellence for, for um, weed control research at Frankfurt um, to, um, to do research with our weed control scientists. Um, next slide, please, Hong Yan. Okay, so this slide, I just want to talk about how our open innovation program and cross sourcing um, effort um, result in long term collaboration uh, in the APAC region. So uh, this um, grants for ag is uh, our annual buyers annual program designed by Phil. Um, so I don't have since the 2021 data is still very fresh. Um, I'm, I'm going to use the 2020 stats um, to illustrate that this program is very fruitful in this region. So for 2020, more than um, a quarter of the awardees are from the APAC region, um, four from Australia, and eventually one of them already signed a follow-up deal with several R&D teams um, uh, from Bayer. Um, so over the couple, uh, last couple of years, we saw a total of 11 applications from New Zealand. Um, and here we want to say that um, after we met, we would love to see more uh, from New Zealand in the future. Um, I think that's all from my part. And I would like to hand the stage over to my um, colleague, um, Anna Bickle, and she's going to talk about our collaboration with a private company from New Zealand. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Juliana, for giving me this opportunity. So I uh, just want to say I've been the, the partnership manager for the Abacus Bio collaboration since it started in 2020. And it's a collaboration that uh, is looking at predictive breeding. And it's taking into account Bayer's expertise in plant breeding and combining that with Abacus Bio's expertise in trait prioritization and valuation. 
uh, they've been great partners to work with. And I'm happy to say that based on the success of the first year plus, almost year and a half that we've been working together, um, as of today, we signed an agreement to expand. And it's really um, touching on the points that Phil brought up. Uh, so we're incorporating sustainability uh, into uh, the collaboration of smallholder farmers, uh, expanding the regions and also bringing in the vegetable business. And so this, uh, this is really, um, as I said, speaks to the success. Abacus is great partners and what they're allowing us to do is make data-driven decisions uh, that take into account the uh, grower insights and market needs uh, to advance our products. So uh, it's one of my favorite collaborations to work on. Uh, I love managing it in the, the great scientists. I know that Peter Ammer is on the phone. Would you like to say a few words as well, Peter? Okay, okay yep, thanks very much. And uh, I'm very pleased that you um, announced the, the signing because I've got everybody here uh, waiting to go to the bar when I come off this um, this call to, to celebrate. Um, so we're really happy about that. But I wish just, I was there to go with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, just from, from our perspective also, this has been a fantastic collaboration. Uh, it's, I guess we've got a lot of um, young emerging, uh, emerging scientists and, and for them to get ex exposure to such a, a big and world leading um, science program, uh, it's really inspiring the, the potential impact that's there. Um, and I guess not only, um, not only the sort of the commercial profitability element of it, but the fact that the project has a sustainability and also some uh, uh, projects tar targeting developing country crops is, um, uh, you know, really sort of fulfilling for us. So I, yeah, I, um, it's been a fantastic experience for us so far and, and really great for our business that we're involved. So thanks for the opportunity just to speak to that. So thanks again. Um, that's all that I have to share on Abacus. Thanks, Peter, for speaking as well. Thank you, Anna and Peter. We now have Brendan uh, O'Connell, Chief Executive of Agritech NZ, who will introduce the Agritech ecosystem of New Zealand. And following his sharing, we'll have um, Graham Soloway, partner NZTE, who will present Callahan Innovation and NZTE to share some industry transformation motivations. Brendan, please. Thank you, Michelle, and uh, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Katoa. Uh, you're all very welcome. Great to be um, uh, great to be here today, and to have so many uh, familiar faces and names on the screen, as well as so many um, uh, hopefully new friends and um, collaborators. Um, and, and thanks very much to Phil, Juliana, and Anna for uh, some great introductions and some great context, uh, particularly that uh, that context for. Uh, existing collaboration. So congratulations to the team at Abacus Bio and, and on all the team up there. That's exactly the type of connection that we're all here to try and uncover. Uh, and so um, great to have an example of that to kick things off. And I'm very glad to give a bit of an introduction to the ecosystem of Agritech here in New Zealand. And when you have an organization like Agritech New Zealand talking about Agritech in New Zealand, I keep on thinking that you know you sort of need to call in the uh, the grammar police and you're sort of looking for apostrophes and commas in the right place. We sort of point out the capital T's when we're talking about the organisation, and uh, and uh, you'll see that coming through when, we, when I talk a little bit about the agritech sector here. As a bit of context uh, and background for uh, the real meaning of agritech for for New Zealand and agriculture, when we talk about agritech here, we uh, we have a story based on being powered by place. And for us, that really means being, being both connected to the land and caring for the land. In, in Maori, um, it's um, kaitiakatanga, uh, which really means being custodians of, the, uh, custodians of the land. And in practice, what that really means is that when you speak to a lot of our researchers, when you speak to our technologists, um, 
you won't have to uh, have a very deep conversation before you realize that they're not long off the land themselves. Everyone talks about their, their father and mother being sheep and, sheep and beef farmers from Tekawiti or avocado growers, or uh, and it really is a, a factor of New Zealand culture where um, there's a strong connection in a very practical way with what it means to be growing on the land and what it means to be innovative in doing that in terms of connecting technologies. Uh, and so we talk about being powered by place. New Zealand, uh, um, um, from Agritech New Zealand's perspective, so here we're moving to the capital T in Agritech, uh, we're an industry organization that connects, promotes and advocates for, for the ecosystem um, here. And so we have 115 member uh, um, organizations, many of whom are with us today. Um, we have seven global partnerships, which uh, one of those partnerships includes um, being the first country signing of Farm 2050, which is a, a global program of um, field trials looking at nutrient management um, through, various, uh, through various farming systems in New Zealand that's looking at dairy. Uh, and so we were uh, delighted to be involved in that, but initially kicked off and it's now beginning to gain ground. Uh, and I know that Bayer is one of the groups that's involved in that, uh, in that program. Our other global partnerships include um, uh, grower groups around the world, um, other agri-tech organizations, and other groups that, that we're seeking to um, foster connections with and to enable these type of sessions. Uh, we also talk about having one national sector strategy or what in New Zealand was launched as an industry transformation plan about 18 months ago. And, uh, and that's really, uh, again, one of the powers of New Zealand to be able to bring together an all of government approach with all of the industry players, be they tech companies, uh, researcher groups and others to look at a shared strategy for the growth of agri-tech and the impact that, that can have both locally and internationally. When we look at our members, uh, it does represent a wide group of people. So it does include many technology businesses. Some of those are early stage businesses. Some of those are really well-established businesses. Uh, it includes all the service providers and the ecosystem that builds around that. And I'll talk a little about that in some of these coming slides, but it also includes our our government agencies, service providers, our investors, um, our researchers uh, in all of the different uh, organizations and forms that they take across the ecosystem. Um, and so it's a, a, um, a, a collective bunch of interests related to the development of Agritech in New Zealand. Agritech New Zealand is part of the NZ Tech Alliance, which has some shared aspirations around um, the use of technology for the prosperity of New Zealand. Uh, and so between us in the work that we do in connecting, promoting and advocating uh, on behalf of the associations that we represent, um, we end up representing about 10% of the overall uh, workforce in, uh, in New Zealand uh, and have many crossover shared aspirations across the, the different sectors. Today, of course, we're here to connect and we're, we're connecting these groups on the right hand side. Um, um, well represented, and we do it on the way to um, identify capabilities to impact global agriculture in exactly the same context that Phil and Juliana and Anna introduced the that overall background of the demand and supply challenges that face uh, all of us on this planet right now, uh, and really looking at making the connections for New Zealand to play its role. Uh, in addressing some of those challenges in partnerships with groups like Bayer. So um, that's the context for today and um, very good to have, you, uh, to have you all here. In terms of uh, New Zealand's um, um, expertise and coverage in terms of uh, agri-tech, um, people talk, I guess, about there being taking a village to raise a child. I think in terms of the ecosystem approach, it's also the same way to bring um, agri-tech ideas to life. And I've talked about this ecosystem in terms of um, the uh, representation that it includes uh, in our own membership. Um, of course, that represents the best and the brightest of people in these, uh, in these sectors. And there are many other um, organizations that come together within the New Zealand ecosystem to, uh, to enable the uh, development and application of agri-tech in useful ways. I guess it's worth talking about the, the key strengths that uh, New Zealand has in terms of agri-tech. Um, we talk about that being in the, uh, the um, livestock and pasture tech, uh, which have been so strong in New Zealand uh, for, um, for so many generations, um, horticulture tech in all its forms, uh, and aquaculture tech. Um, 
across all of those, um, the themes of clean tech and biotech are there. And what that really means in terms of applications then is a breadth of applications and understanding around animal health and performance, uh, genetics and breeding, and, and that, that includes both um, animal genetics and breeding, but of course, plant, seed and crop genetics and breeding across a lot of our research organizations and our agri-tech businesses. Uh, crop protection, soil and input management, environment and waste management, and all the themes and applications that you would expect put together in quite a unique uh, package in New Zealand because of the, uh, the makeup of that ecosystem and the connectivity of that ecosystem because of the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the quite useful size of our overall country and how easy it is to make connections. Of course, across all of these um, applications are supported by technologies that many of the companies that we have here today uh, will, be, will have expertise in and be developing that. And so when we look across both of those applications and technologies, the organizations that we have here today um, would represent a mix of the research capabilities, the early stage capabilities, the funding and business growth capabilities, and then the actual technology skills and being able to make these, these things come to life. Agritech as an overall uh, export class for New Zealand uh, is uh, 1.4 billion um, New Zealand dollars. And we talk about having four levels of impact for the, the actual impact on New Zealand's own productivity and sustainability for its primary industry. Um, the connections we make like today is in terms of our system and IP exports, regional development, which I'll mention briefly, and of course, global impacts, which is exactly the context that you introduced Dr. Phil at the beginning of today. Uh, and we have real aspirations through global connections like these of growing the impact we have for New Zealand. And when we look at similar economies around the world, um, um, we know that to grow that to um, 10 billion and beyond has no real practical limitations. When you look at New Zealand as a physical land, of course, it's long and slender. It covers many different farming practices um, from north to south. Um, and, and that's really when you look at agri-tech in place and where our agri-tech businesses are, there are many factors that both uh, uh, affect the place of those businesses and those research associations, uh, but also to some extent, the focus of what those are, which gives the sort of the breadth and diversity of New Zealand as a real research hothouse, a great test bed for many farming systems around the world, because we do cover so many different climatic and farming systems uh, and collection of expertise. A lot of those things cover everything from urban food centers to food bowls, um, from farming systems that include orchards and paddocks, uh, hills and flat areas. If you were to see the actual topographical uh, version of this type of map, you'd notice the string of mountains that give the country its name of the long white, uh, land of the long white cloud and the small patches of flat areas and, uh, and hill country that lands around. Of course, our connection between land and sea is really great uh, uh, in New Zealand as well, with uh, very few places being more than 130 kilometers from the, from, from the sea and nearly 95% of our, of, our, of our economic zone being, uh, being at sea. Um, and of course, as well as that uh, connection with the land, that understanding of, of, of primary industry, some of the strengths that the organizations you'll meet here today bring uh, is that sort of wealth of technology and manufacturing services, technical skills um, that come together to do those translations between the biological world and the physical and digital world that, uh, um, that you talk about today yourselves at Bayer when you talk about that, that digital theme weaving through all the different aspects. And that's something we, uh, we understand and see well here in New Zealand. You'll see lots of examples hopefully today, or you'll get some glimpses of them. You know, we definitely look at many of the tech, not emerging technologies definitely not being uh, emerging any longer. They are, they are actively being deployed. Uh, some of the companies mentioned here um, will be joining us today in some of these, these discussions. And they all represent examples of the ecosystem coming together in different forms between the, the innovators, the investors, the government agencies, uh, the industry collaborations, the access to field trials. Uh, and, and, uh, and it's that combination, I think, that brings New Zealand's agri-tech capabilities to real strength. You notice when the slides get uh, slides get lighter, you're coming towards the end of the tunnel. So we go from the black theme to the white theme. And talk, when we talk about our integrated R&D system here, there is a, um, a wealth of experience that's incorporated both in our, our Crown Research Institutes, which we have here with us today, 
um, our universities and our research organizations, some of them public, some of them private. Um, uh, these, these ones representing the public ones. So uh, again, a, a, a great wealth of resources and, uh, and connections. And the real purpose of today is to keep on building on the relationships that already exist and hopefully seed some new and future relationships. So I'd like to leave it at that as uh, an overall um, introduction. Uh, um, thank you all for being here today and I look forward to the discussions that will follow. Thank you, Brandon. Graham, on to you. Thanks, Michelle. Kia ora, everyone. Uh, thank you. Brendan's given a, um, a very comprehensive overview of New Zealand agri-tech uh, ecosystem, and I'm just going to uh, briefly introduce New Zealand Trade and Enterprise and Callaghan Innovation, who are the uh, partnering agencies, New Zealand government agencies with, uh, with, with Agritech NZ uh, on the um, industry transformation plan that, um, that uh, Brendan has alluded to. And also, um, uh, just to uh, just also in terms of the in terms of the relationship uh, underneath that that we're building with Bayer Life, Science, Life Sciences. So, um, New Zealand Trade Enterprise, we are the international or, or, or we're the economic development agency for New Zealand. We have the we have in that part of that our international outreach around that. Um, we work with our sister agency, Callaghan Innovation, to grow and connect New Zealand organisations to international partners, such as Bayer, Bayer, Bayer Crop Science. So between us, we've got um, uh, presence in, uh, in uh, over 50 countries around the world. We've got um, uh, um, 1,400 staff across both uh, NZTE and Callaghan Innovation. And um, included within that are, uh, in, in, in Calais Innovation are, two, innovation are 200 uh, scientists and engineers. So it's very much a, a, um, a science, science from R&D through commercialization and into internationalization pipeline that we're, we're building. Um, so so we're, uh, we're very much focused, as, as mentioned, on the, on the development of the ITP, of, the, of ag agri-tech in the context of, the, of New Zealand's uh, industry transformation. Um, we know that global agri-tech is opportunities and challenges are evolving rapidly. Uh, we need those relationships. We need, the, uh, we need to be able to complement New Zealand capabilities, some of which Brendan has referred to in his presentation, with partners around the world. And we see the, this importance here of this relationship with Bayer Crop Science uh, is um, very important for, for us to spark connections and thought leadership. So we've had a very positive relationship over the last six months, and we're looking to hope to continue to explore uh, the ways in which we can extend these relationships. So my final point to the New Zealand businesses represented here, take the opportunity uh, here to talk to um, the people in Bayer Crop Science, take the opportunity to understand what they do, and to reach out and follow up as well. So, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's Michelle, uh, I'll just make reference to her. Uh, she has made an outstanding job in pulling this, pulling this, uh, this, this webinar today together. Um, I just want to make sure that we, we, we are able to support the work that she's doing and the work that uh, our colleagues at Callaghan Innovation are doing uh, and AgriTech NZ by um, making sure that we, as New Zealanders, um, um, press forward into these sorts of relationships with Bayer Crop Science. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here today. Thank you, Graham, and thank you, Brandon, for a really comprehensive overview. It's really good. Um, let's see. Okay, it's uh, eight forty-two. So we have originally set aside half an hour to go into a time of rapid-fire declarations of what your team would like to attract. Um, the networking guide that you have in your Zoom tag already states which organization you're from. So our request is for each team representative to share within 60 seconds what your team is seeking to do or are interested to hear more about. I'm just going to call people out so that it makes it move a lot faster. And I'm doing it in order of um, how you're appearing on screen. So if I might invite Avicus Bio, Peter, if you could kick off for uh, 60 seconds um, to share what your team might be looking for, uh, that would be great. Okay, yep, um, thank you very much. Uh, so I guess we are looking to expand our um, business internationally and um, 
uh, I guess part of the export of New Zealand agri-tech. We see that there's a, a role for us in that. So we already have a partnership with Fire, as, as we mentioned earlier. Um, we want to build that into a long-term uh, relationship. It's already quite long-term, but still um, beyond that. And uh, so that will involve doing what we're already doing better, but also trying to find uh, other areas where our skills might fit in. So that's uh, uh, enough context from me. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, we move on to Johan from Massey University. Um, yeah, it's not Johan, it's Russell Wilson. Um, so at Massey, oh. we've, we've, we've a long history in, uh, in agriculture. And I guess what we're looking for is that um, we've developed some deep technologies in that space. Uh, exporting some uh, nice looking technologies such as biolumic. Uh, we have some emerging uh, DNA for plant pathogens, but I guess what we're looking for is that uh, overall engagement so that we can both uh, drive our postgrads primarily uh, as a source of those industry leaders uh, for the next generation. So we're really looking at, uh, at being the powerhouse of the postgrad uh, sector and lining them up with real industry problems and uh, international uh, collaborations give them the opportunity to uh, do what all Kiwis do best, which is travel. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. Um, Eaton, Crop X. Yeah, so, uh, so hi everybody. Um, so CropX uh, New Zealand, CropX is not new yet, originated in New Zealand like uh, six years ago and now uh, operating uh, for the last uh, nine, nine months. And we are looking for, for partners, mainly now in New Zealand, looking for partners to do some activity in New Zealand uh, with, uh, with large uh, uh, scale of data analytics and collection. And we already have a lot to share. We just need the, the right partners to, uh, to analyze it and to improve our capabilities and what we are offering. Uh, and, and, you know, like uh, Abacos uh, Bio did with Bayer, we are looking, the, looking for the local uh, buyers uh, here in, uh, in New Zealand. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eaton. And we move on to FTech. Miss Hira, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your first name. I tried to ask you just now. You're on mute. My first name is Marika. Marika. <laughs> yeah. So um, FTEC, we um, specialize in the indoor vegetable growing industry and um, we are focused on crop maintenance and harvesting equipment. And we've recently um, commercialized a fully automated spray robot. Um, we probably need some help scaling that um, to offshore opportunities. So that's where um, we'd be looking. We also, off the back of that um, success with growers, we've actually been um, asked to uh, push the automation further in this space. So we're actually looking at um, an R&D project uh, to address uh, high labor tasks that we could tackle with using automation, machine learning, et cetera. So I think um, it would be beneficial to look at um, collaboration in this space, whether that be um, technical, if we're, we're all looking at similar sensors, um, that sort of thing, or whether that's market collaborations to gain traction within our core industries. So yeah, we look, we look um, forward to sort of exploring these, these spaces and how we can collaborate. Thank you, Marika, helpful to know. We'll move on to data, Phil, Christoph, your turn. Thank you. Um, yeah, Datapil's uh, harvest management system, um, we're looking at uh, the, the labour force, understanding what they're doing, incentivizing them and making sure that um, growers of, of fruit and vegetable get the best out of their labour force. And whilst we're doing that, we're um, uh, getting a lot of traceability through our RFID solutions about where, what's being picked, where it's come from and that kind of stuff. So we're collecting a lot of data and we're, um, we know there's some value to things like crop estimation or to, to um, other parts um, outside of what we're doing as well. So really wanna um, uh, partner and, and figure out 
you know, what the value of, of what we're doing really is and how to expand and, and grow as well. Thanks. Thanks, Christoph. Carly, Ag Research. Hi, everyone. Um, Tena Koto Katoa. I won't um, speak about ag research uh, too much. I think uh, most people know that uh, we are a Crown Research Institute um, underpinned by scientists uh, with strong um, and many strong expertise in the agricultural sector. Um, and so beyond that, the partnership and program team, which I'm part of, um, we are all about partnership and uh, specifically for me, it's um, also international partnerships. And so of course, um, today, I mean, um, ag research came up in a few presentations, of course, but I think beyond that, um, we, we want to reinforce those, those current partnership, but also develop more programs internationally. Um, and I mean, there's various areas we are quite interested in, but when, I, when we think of bio, um, we are, you know, more around the biopesticides and that sort of thing. But again, many areas of expertise that could lead to many, many um, R&D collaborations around the world. So uh, very much open to any type of conversation because it always takes us somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Coralie. And you have started some discussion, so looking forward to seeing more of that happen. Okay, we move on to uni services. So, Pal, maybe yourself or Nick might like to give us a bit of an intro. Sure. Kia ora koutou. Thank you for having us. Um, the University of Auckland is the leading university in New Zealand. Um, we are a research-based university. We actually are in the top 10 globally for impact, including sustainability. So we've got a lot of projects in, in this space. Um, we are the commercialization company of the university. So we do all sorts of contract research, consulting projects, but also have our own capability and our own funds to uh, create companies. So we spin out about 10 companies every year. And um, in some of those, um, and some of those projects that are in the pipeline, I think, would be of interest to Bayer, in particular around um, IoT and sort of automation of agriculture, but also in the peptide space. We have some really interesting compounds that we've been looking into that I think would be interesting to discuss with someone like Bayer. Obviously, very open to partnership, and we have other large um, corporate research programs as well. So we would be very happy to have a conversation about doing something like that with uh, Bayer and potentially other partners like, I'm just gonna mention one because might be relevant, but we do have a collaboration with the University of Missouri. So that might be something that's easy enough to put together um, looking at some of the locations that you guys have shown in the previous slides. Um, maybe Nick wants to add something. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Paul. We'll have Cheers. to move on. We'll have to move on. Thank you. All right. Lincoln Agritech, Dean, nice to see you again. Your 60 seconds, please. Uh, thank, thanks, Michelle. And um, thanks for uh, organizing this today. Much appreciated. Um, Lincoln Agritech have, as you know, because you put that together too, had some previous conversations with uh, Bayer, and we spoke with Phil and Juliana and Hong Young not too long ago. Um, so Lincoln Agritech is, is very heavily involved in agriculture in New Zealand. And, and I guess from we're looking to grow our collaborations uh, internationally. And so Bayer fits right into that um, work stream. Um, we're very strong and not only the R&D, but we have point of differences that we do a lot of engineering. And so we have scientists and engineering within our um, building. And that helps to get real world um, solutions um, out and make an impact. And, and that's kind of the, the, what we're looking for with these sort of relationships. Thank you, Dean. And Julia just called out that it's good to see you again. <laughs> nice, nice to see you too. <laughs> okay, we move to Zespri. Hello, Sarah, 60 seconds, please. Um, hi everyone. So um, I'm Z Sarah in the innovation team at Zespri. So Zespri basically, um, as you probably all know, is kiwi fruit, and 
my platform, we look after the sustainable orchard productivity platform, and that includes um, orchard technology, crop protection and market access, orchard productivity, and we also look after some of the work that goes on in our Italian um, growing regions. So basically what I joined this call because I'm reasonably new to the innovation team, although I've been with Zespri for quite some time, and I was just trying to work out how everybody fits together. So I recognize quite a few of the names, um, obviously Zespri partners with quite a few of the, the organizations already on this call. Um, with So in, in our innovation team, the way we set it up is we, um, we contract out to research providers to, to try and solve some of the problems that we're having on Orchard and in our supply chain. So that's, that's me. Thank you, Sarah. Otago Innovation, Graham. Uh, kia ora everybody. Um, good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. It's nice to meet everyone. Uh, my name is Graham Strong. I'm with Otago Innovation, which is the University of Otago's Technology Transfer Office. Um, our focus specifically is predominantly in the sort of human health and science area, but we do have some technologies that are focused in agri-tech. Um, but what would be really good for us is to get a very clear understanding on how Bayer, for example, likes to do stuff. How does Bayer like to partner? What are their expectations? How do they like to do business? Just to give us a clear understanding of whether any of the technologies that we might have might fit or no, so that we've got a, an understanding of whether you know it's something that we can or can't do or work together. I think that would be incredibly valuable for us. Thank you, Thank Brett. You. We'll probably go into a little bit more detail when we do our small group discussions, but good, sure. good that you flag that. Thank you. We move to Greg, Blue Lab. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> I'm Greg from Blue Lab. Uh, we are predominantly in the controlled environment egg space, uh, particularly focused around greenhouse and covered crop. And our business is really instrumentation. So we look at um, things like conductivity, pH, temperature, um, both in the nutrient solution and also uh, in the actual uh, media itself. Uh, so we're a sort of hardware hoping to, to grow up to be a software company one day. And um, <clears throat> we have done some collaborations in the past with uh, Lincoln uh, and our, our product, our pulse meter was a collaboration with, with Lincoln and uh, that uh, was successfully launched into the market a couple of years ago. And that was quite a departure for us because it looked at um, parameters effectively in media as opposed to sort of the water-based um, solutions that we've traditionally been looking at. So uh, yeah, just interested to hear about further collaboration opportunities. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Okay, we move to Hot Plus. Mike, please. Kia ora everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, Mike Bailey from Hall Plus. Um, Hall Plus is a, is a private company uh, and we've developed a decision support platform uh, that provides pest and disease infection risk models. So this information helps growers and managers with their spray decisions. Uh, and we provide this to most of the sectors within New Zealand. Uh, so what we're looking for, I guess, is uh, opportunities uh, to partner, uh, to partner with and explore international um, uh, opportunities, um, you know, where our services could help uh, with that crop protection challenges uh, in, in others' businesses. Uh, and so I guess what, what we would be interested in is, is having a conversation with Bayer around, you know, what they're wanting to achieve, uh, to achieve um, from a software perspective in this space. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. You'll be chatting with Chris Chi and Michael later, so I think all good. We can take that discussion forward. Um, University of Canterbury, Hamish, please. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, kia ora, everybody. Um, my name's Hamish McGowan. I'm with uh, University of Canterbury. Uh, we're a broad-based research and teaching university based in Christchurch, Canterbury. Um, I'm with the Research and Innovation Group, which is uh, both the research office and the commercialization office um, where um, there's six main research themes that we uh, center our university around um, and at least two of those fit quite squarely with the agri-tech sector um, we at RNI are tasked with helping our academics and 
students make a difference in the world um, and putting together connections and relationships that help them make an impact in the world. And uh, we're hoping to uh, make connections and uh, become aware of things that people want. Thank you, Hamish. We move to Tato Technology, Sydney. Your turn. You gotta unmute. Okay, my name is Sydney Mazi. I'm from Tato. Uh, we are a software management solution for the horticultural sector here in New Zealand. We have operations in New Zealand and Australia. We have most of the big players here in New Zealand in viticulture and kiwi fruit, players like Sika and others. And we, we generate a lot of data and we help them fight labor shortage with data so they take the most out of their teams. And we are looking for cross selling opportunities with other companies that provide this similar services uh, or additional services to growers in New Zealand and Australia and potentially globally, but focus on us. We already have a few, a few clients in Australia, but we want to expand to that sector, to that country. Okay, noted. Thank you, Sydney. Can we please go to GPS IT? Matt, your 60 seconds, please. I'm um, uh, Matt Blade from uh, GPS. So that about 21 years ago, um, doing farm and orchard mapping using drone and GPS technology. Uh, since then, we've created our own digital mapping platform called Landkind uh, to try and unlock the value of maps. Um, from that, we've created digital workflows to try and get more consistent, better data into the platform. Uh, and since then, we've been partnering with other uh, providers around the industry to add location to the data that they're actually capturing um, and then providing that back to our, our, our growers and end users as well. So. Um, so we're looking for uh, more partners, more data sources that we can collaborate with to uh, drive an overall picture of what's happening in an orchard and farm environment. Uh, if, yeah, environment. So um, and we're also quite heavily involved now in the uh, overall environmental space. So we've been doing a lot of work with um, the likes of the Fonterra over about 10 years, mm -hmm. and we're looking at how we take that out um, globally as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matt. And you've got amazing videos on your website and YouTube channel. So. <laughs> Thank you, except for this video that you're seeing of me now, it just looks like I'm in a witness protection program, so. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we move to Biostar. Jerome, please. Oh, hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm Jerome Demmer. I'm the CEO of Biostar. Um, Biostar was a company that was started 27 years ago by a farmer who wanted to use biology more efficiently on his farm. And so like all good Kiwi businesses, he found a corner in a shed, took his idea and started making some products. And the first product he made actually turned out to be one of the first most widely sold prebiotic in um, New Zealand for raising calves. Um, now we are one of the leading biological companies in New Zealand and we have an established sale force and we have over 24 products that we sell into various markets in both agriculture and horticulture. Uh, we've got our own sales team, um, also starting a sales team in Australia and trying to grow our sales there. Uh, what am I looking for today? I think our products have got global relevance. Uh, we clearly can't do it all by ourselves. So I'm very interested in finding a partner who can take us global. And I'm interested in Bayer and that we sort of compete, I guess, in the marketplace in New Zealand, but you guys are very strong in that biological um, sector. So I think there's some good complementarity to be had there, and I'm just keen to start that process. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Okay, and we have um, Dr. Colleen and Dr. Larry from AUT. Um, would either of you like to do your 60 seconds, please? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Colleen. Um, I'm um, an academic in the School of Science at Auckland University of Technology, or AUT. My colleague, Larry, is in AUT Ventures, which is the commercial arm of our university. Um, I think that as a, well, just to start off, AUT is the fastest growing university in New Zealand currently, and is the second largest university in New Zealand. And as a university, we're a teaching and research organization. And a lot of what we do is basic research, but also um, you know, aspects of it will, are applied as well. I think from uh, the types of research that we're doing, we're looking at uh, natural medicines and natural products for use in um, environmental health, human health, and so on. 
me personally, I'm a plant virologist. I'm a molecular plant pathologist. So I'm interested in uh, plant disease and diagnostics and emergence of disease and environmental microbiology. And so for within my school, there are people who are interested in the, the um, creation of or identification of natural products that might be useful, uh, diagnostics, uh, disease progress and understanding at the molecular level how disease works and how it happens and looking for targets that might be useful in an agricultural setting. And then we also have folk in engineering who are interested in um, working in that space also. From uh, my point of view, uh, coming into today, I had no preconceived ideas. I, I had no idea what today would be about. I was just really keen to um, identify a few people, look at faces to names and think about what possibilities um, I might learn about from today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Colleen. Okay, we are close to the hour, um, but I think it's quite important that we meet the rest of our bear guests as well, and, and also Nikki and, and Simon from Callahan. So just a very quick hello from everyone so that those who are not in your same team might will still get a chance to see you and hear from you. Could we just do a quick round, if I might invite um, Michael from Bear to just say a quick hello, and then we move on to Chris and the rest of um, the team. Um, I'll, I'll call you out one at a time. Michael, if you're there. Yes, uh, one, one second. No worries. Give me, give me a minute to uh, turn on my camera. No worries, take your time. Okay, can see you now. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, I'm, I'm Michael based in uh, Singapore, uh, taking care of digital business development for Asia Pacific. That's uh, looking out for digital partnerships in various areas around remote sensing, drones, uh, digital advisory, IoT. Um, and uh, I'm part of our uh, internal venture building organization where we help uh, build new digital farming products uh, for our growers. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Chris Staff. Thanks, Michelle, and hello, everyone. Uh, Chris Staff, I'm the Head of Digital Farming for Australia and New Zealand in Biocrop Science. Um, so I guess our, our focus, um, I must admit, has um, largely over these last couple of years been um, focused on Australia. And so we're sort of recognising that New Zealand from a, a digital farming perspective in Bayer has been somewhat um, underserved. Um, for, from our perspective. So really um, fantastic to um, hear and, and be present today to um, to get a little bit more direct understanding and contact with the agri-tech segment in New Zealand. So uh, I've really enjoyed the um, the discussion so far and, um, and looking forward to meeting you in the breakout sessions. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Chris Chi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Chris Chi from uh, uh agronomic solutions uh, regional uh, regional agronomic agro solutions team in charge of uh, digital tools and uh, and also some other aspect basically we we do some uh, uh, field trials uh, to evaluate our uh, crop protection products field for performance so we are very interested in, in in any new technology to make our field trial planning data collection or data analysis more digitally so uh, yeah, that is uh, about my, my, myself. Thank you, Chris. Sean, could we just have a quick hello from you too, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, <clears throat> hey, guys. Uh, my name is Sean from Bayer, uh, Digital Incubator, uh, same team from, as Michael. And I'm currently uh, leading and building a digital venture uh, in China. Uh, so we're basically trying to digitize a planting of uh, on the farm productions, uh, specifically in cash crops like strawberry, um, citrus, and uh, tomato, and at the same time to work with off takers uh, to optimize and streamline this uh, food supply chain piece. So we're also looking for uh, partners that work for both on the farm and also be on the farm specifically in the food supply chain space. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Okay, we have met uh, Phil and Anna, and uh, it's a very important person, Hong Yen, um, who has been 
one of the main orchestrators in creating connections and partnerships. Hong Yen, over to you. With this title, with this title I'm, um, this is Hong Yen. I'm in Juliana's team based in Beijing as well and um, responsible for sourcing innovative opportunities in Asia Pacific and uh, facilitating to build partnerships. Um, uh, it's truly a pleasure to see this really happening after tons of planning by Michelle and the rest of the uh, local partners. Um, so I learned a great deal about the uh, Ivory Tech landscapes um, halfway through the meeting already. Um, hope everyone uh, enjoy the rest of the meeting and uh, get the most out of it. Thank you, Hong Yen. Um, Dev was meant to join, but I don't think he's here. And uh, we would have, yeah, so we've met Phil, Anna, Juliana, and am I missing anyone else from there that I'm not seeing on my screen, Juliana? Okay, I think okay. I think you're I think you're all set. Okay, all set. Can we have a quick hello from um, Nikki and Simon too? Yeah, hi, it's Nikki here from Callahan Innovation. Um, yeah, we've been fortunate to be working alongside Michelle, Michelle Graham and Megan from NZTE and um, being Callahan's uh, the innovation agency, just um, working with early stage startups um, and across the ecosystem. So this has been a, a great opportunity to sort of connect a whole lot of the ecosystem up with, with Bayer for our companies that are really keen to take on global opportunities. Thank you, Nikki. Yeah. Simon? Nothing really to add to that. Um, thanks for Nikki for giving such a great rundown on Callahan, but obviously working with Nikki as well. Thank you, Simon. Megan, quick hi from you. Uh, kia ora, um, my name is Megan, so I know a few of you, but I'm um, working within NZT on this Agritech Industry Transformation Plan and really excited to see this uh, all come together and, and the opportunities that will come from it, so enjoy. Thank you. Um, a quick introduction also to our lovely lady Chantel and Caroline who have been working magic behind the scenes. I'm not going to disturb them because they probably are toggling a few things at the moment, but just wanted to call them out and say thank you so much, Caroline and Chantel, for making everything tick so well. Am I missing anyone? If anyone has not had a chance to say a quick hello, please unmute yourself. Okay, all right. So thank you for making that work fairly tightly. We've got a better understanding of who's who. And I think now you probably have, a, have an idea of who you may wish to meet. Um, so we'll head into our four social rooms. Chantelle and Caroline will be whisking you away into rooms A, B, C, or D. And um, folks from New Zealand, after 10 minutes, if you wish um, to wander into another room, all you need to do is just come back into this central hall. Um, and request to be sent to another room. So we'll do this for about 20 minutes um, before inviting everyone back. Actually, you have no choice. We'll just pull you back again and close. <laughs> so have fun and um, take a quick drink while we get zipped into our different rooms right now. Thank you, Chantal and Caroline. <laughs>